All right, here we go. Identity and Access Management, also known as IAM. It is the central tool for securing our AWS accounts. We can apply IAM to users, that's people like us that would log into our systems and our accounts. We could apply it to services. Say, for example, we wanted to have a Lambda function that does insert a row into DynamoDB. We could give that Lambda function permission to do that and assign that role to that Lambda function. Therefore, it would be able to do that. We can also apply permissions to systems. So for example, if we had an EC2 system up and running, we can apply a role to that EC2 system. Then if we log into that EC2 system, we could do stuff that is contained or that would be allowed by the role that was applied to that EC2 instance. And also we can use IAM on-prem. So AWS has come up with something called IAM Anywhere, which allows us to apply IAM policies and rules to on-prem equipment. So we can install some software locally, and then we can manage the access and the permissions to those systems and for those systems using IAM. Generally speaking, when we're talking about IAM, we're talking about authentication, meaning are you who you say you are? We're talking about authorization, which is, okay, once you've proven who you are, are you authorized or what are you authorized to do in our systems? And then finally, there's this guardrail component. And when I say guardrails, kind of envision on a highway or something like that, you have these barriers at the side of the road. And the purpose there is to keep you from running off the road into the ditch. And that's what we want to apply to our own accounts as well, because sometimes we need to protect ourselves from ourselves. And IAM has some different features and facilities to help with that. So let's look at the IAM components first. There is a user. That's just a person like us that would log into our account. We have groups. And that's just groups of users. We can define a group and then put users in that group. And we have something called a role. Now, if you're familiar with other security type frameworks here, these are probably not unusual. These are very common users, groups, roles, that sort of thing. IAM, we also have something called a policy. And I kind of like to envision it this way. The policy is more or less like a key that lets us through a particular locked door. And we can take those policies and we can put them on a key ring, which is a role. And then we can hand that role to either a group or users or a service or systems. And then whoever is the recipient of that key ring, that role, then has access for getting to whatever those policies, those keys on that key ring permit. Now, another name for a user, a more generic name for a user, is an identity. And when we talk about identities, we can use identities from other federated services or federated systems. So we could use Google Workspaces, we could use Okta, we could use Microsoft products as the identity basis or the repository for our identities, and we can integrate IAM with those. Now we can also integrate with something called Amazon Cognito, and we're gonna cover that in a different skill. But think about Cognito as, let's say you had a mobile app that is publicly accessible. You certainly wouldn't wanna create user accounts in IAM for every possible public user that would come use your system. And you probably wouldn't wanna to try to create some sort of identity management system yourself because there are plenty of those things already out there. Amazon Cognito is one such thing. So we can outsource the identity management system to Amazon Cognito, and that integrates very well with IAM. So that if we have, say, thousands and thousands of accounts, we could have Cognito provision those accounts and manage those accounts and handle password resets and all sorts of crazy stuff like that. And then that integrates very well as a source of identities to IAM. Another source of identities is something called AWS IAM Identity Center. And that is what AWS pretty much recommends as the modern way to manage users in your AWS accounts. And again, we're gonna cover that in a different skill as well. But think about IAM Identity Center as just this other system, this other database that can hold users and groups and that, those sorts of things. And it will integrate into IAM as the source of truth for identities. 
Now, just like other identity access systems, we can put users, these identities in groups, and we can manage them however we want in these third party or these external identity repositories, and we can still integrate them with IAM. All right, let's look a little bit closer at how this conversation goes between the various components. So here I have the user, I have IAM, I have the roles and I have the policies. And I'm gonna log into IAM, I'm gonna say, hey, I'm Scott, and IAM says, oh yeah, go ahead and prove it. And I say, here's my password, and then IAM says, I still don't trust you. And I say, here's my multi-factor authentication method, in my case, it's my YubiKey. And then IAM finally is satisfied, it says, okay, I'm gonna trust you for a little while, here are your keys. So it's gonna hand this role over to me. Now this is important here. I'm gonna trust you for a little while. And why is that important? Because we don't wanna have security that's indefinite. So once I authorize myself, I want that to time out after a period of time because if somebody swipes my laptop or something like that, then they could just get in there and do all the stuff that I have under my roles. So I definitely want that authorization to have an expiration date. And after that expiration date, I've got to go through this whole process again to prove that I truly am who I are, who I am. Now, this is a very similar process. If we're using some sort of third party identity management system, we would have that same type of conversation. And then that third party identity management system would finally tell IAM, okay, he's cool, he's who he says he is. And it generally uses SAML 2.0 to do this. That's how these things can kind of get integrated in. And then it says, okay, here are your keys. I'm gonna trust you for a little while. Same thing. It's not gonna give me just indefinite access. It's only gonna trust me for a period of time, in which case I'm gonna have to go back through this particular process and reauthorize myself. So now let's talk about role trusts. So we can have role trusts. And if you recall, the role is kind of like that keychain with a bunch of different policies on it. We can assign those roles or we can allow other services to access those roles using a role trust. So for instance, we have AWS Lambda, we have EC2, we have SSM, and we have a role here and we can establish a trust between that service and that role. So that will give Lambda the ability to call this role and do whatever it is that that role has been defined based on the policies that are contained in that role. And typically we call that type of role a service role because these services are the ones that are executing that role. So we just call it a service role. We can also set up service roles to provide access from other AWS accounts. So let's say, for example, our company has five different AWS accounts, but we want to provide access from one account into another so that somebody can log into this other account. And we don't want to have to create an individual user in each and every account for that person. We can set up a service role that allows people from that other account to assume a role inside of our other account or the target account. Now I know it's maybe a little bit complex and kind of fuzzy at this point, but as we progress through this skill, things will become a little bit more clear, especially when we start seeing real world examples of these things. In the next video, we are going to talk about policies, IAM policies.